Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, race number four at Belmont Park on Saturday is the grade three Noble Damsel Stakes at one mile on the turf for fillies and mares. Bet it with a new DRF Bets account. Sign up at bets.drf.com. Receive a 300% deposit match. Here's the field for the Noble Damsel. It's a short field before scratches, and we are expecting the number one lift up and the number five mythical mission to withdraw from the Noble yeah. Damsel Stakes and run at Laurel. That would mean a field of four. That would mean, hey, chance it's got half the field. Yeah, hard to believe he would have half the field in a greatest stakes race on turf in New York. But that, that's how it might turn out. Listen, lift up um, in Mythical Mission. I think they're both okay, but they were also going to be the two longest shots on the board here. So I'm not sure how much it changes things if they don't run here. So Chad will have the two morning line favorites and probably the two favorites come post time, beginning with the number two, Uni, who made her return off a little bit of a layoff in the Della Rose Stakes at Saratoga. And I realize it was soft turf, but boy, she fired hard in the stretch. I didn't really think there was a ton of pace on. She was last on the rail entering the turn, swung into about the eight path turning yeah. for home. And then she ran down a good Chad horse in the lane. I agree with that. I mean, she's only run twice this year, which concerns me a little bit. We've only seen her two times, um, but she's run really well in both of them. I mean, that first start off the layoff at Aqueduct, that wasn't the strongest field in the world, and they didn't go fast early. Um, it allowed her to just sit right in behind Lee. She got a perfect trip in that race, but she stormed through the stretch in there. She was really impressive off the layoff, and she might have been better last time. I mean, it looked like she brushed the gate coming out of there, so maybe she was even going to be a little more forward. Irad had to sort of reach down there, adjust his, it looks like his foot came out of the stirrup, he had to get it back in, so she was outrun early, but she did the same thing in there. I mean, she just stormed down the outside. The horse she ran down, I mean, who knows what she turns out to be, but she was a Group 1 winner in France over soft turf. That's the kind of ground she really likes. This horse came and ran her down. Now, in this short field, there isn't going to be a lot of pace. You wouldn't yeah. think up front. Does that really work against Uni? Because when you look back at her lines, two and four back, both wins and stakes competition, yeah. she was able to adapt successfully. Yeah, I mean, that's how I was looking at it. I mean, they might go slow in this race, but I don't know if it really has to compromise her because she will sit closer if, you have, if she has to. And I just really like the fact that it feels like um, Chad's found what she wants to do now. I think the mile is probably a really good distance. They tried some longer races last year and didn't always work out. Going shorter might be better. I think shorter is also going to be better for Chad's number three, Dream a While. They've stretched her out to a mile and an eighth twice now in North America, and she's basically run the identical race, where it looked like she made a winning yeah. move on the turn, opened up a clear lead, and just didn't stay while being run down by the same horse both times. Right. Chad's Elysia's World. Her figures are solid. She might have a smidge more tactical speed than Uni. True. She's rock solid. I mean, all those things are true. I don't really have anything to add to it. I think she's pretty good. Um, I wonder if Uni just might not be a little bit better than yeah. her, but I feel like this filly's good, and I think this is the right discipline. I think shorter is better for her. I liked her win two starts back. I don't think that was as strong a field as this one, even though there's only going to be four in here, it seems like. But she ran well in that race two but starts back. But in a short field on the turf, you expect a horse on the lead to be tough. Timeform US agrees. The blue bar on the pace projector indicates that Timeform US believes this race will favor horses on or near the early lead. And they have the number four, Hawksmoor. Gate to wire winner at Belmont last year in both the Bogey and the New York Stakes on a relatively clear lead. Now, yeah. she made a clear lead in the Diana two starts back. Sister Charlie was just too much too horse good. for her. Last time out in the Boston Spa, she kind of conceded to Kadura. So while the pace wasn't fast and she had the second best trip, yeah. she lost to the horse with the best trip. That is true. I mean, that was a weird race, that Boston Spa, because Cordura got loose. Lead, right? yeah, just, yeah, she was supposed to. They didn't even try to make it. Cordura took it. Cordura's a better horse than Hawksmoor is. That was also a weird race. So Raven Beauty was the big favorite there. She never really fired. I don't know what was going on in that race. I still, I just look at it this way, Dan. I, On paper, it looks almost too good to be true for Hawksmoor. She looks like she's at least as good as the two Chad horses, if not better on paper. If you just look at her last two races, it feels like she's come back just as good this year as she was last year, and she was good last year. Why don't I buy any of that? I don't think she's come back as good this year as she was last year. I know she's faced better horses in her last two starts, but she didn't run well at all on the Diana when she got loose on the lead. Ultra bright she right over. Yeah, she, she wasn't going to be such a Charlie, but she didn't finish second or third in that race. I don't think she ran that well. You know, what'd she do last time, really? She sat behind Quadura. She never made up an inch of ground in that race, and she held on for a second. I don't know, Dan, I just don't buy her. I know that she's tough in this race, and I, we'll see. Maybe you're just, just supposed to concede to her a little bit. I, I just don't like the form she's in. Thundering Sky, the number six, uh, is a nibbler, seven times second from 24 lifetime starts. I understand what George Weaver was doing last time out, trying mm. to do something a little bit different to wake up Thundering Sky. They shipped her to Woodbine. They turned her back in distance and sprinted her on a synthetic surface. She usually is 
focus forward in her turf routes. She broke pretty well, but Rajiv, it looked like, made a concerted effort to take her near the back of the pack. She swung very wide into the stretch, and she just got wired by Code Warrior, who yeah. was able to pretty much set her own relaxed pace. All in all, I thought it was a really solid effort for Thundering Sky, but isn't she exposed at this level? She kind of is. Yeah, I think you're kind of right about that. We'll see. It does feel like, I think she fits well in this field, but I also think that the other three horses that she's probably running against, they're probably all a little bit better than she is. We'll see what happens. I think she can get the, a good trip in this yeah. race. I do think when you start going back, I thought she ran fine last time. I'll give her the pass for the race two back. I thought the Belmont race, the Churchill race, and the Royal Heron, I thought she had at least mild excuses and all. I think she ran better than it looks in all of those races. I don't know. I still think this is too tough for her, but she's better than she looks on paper. Would you, if you were Rashid, try to pull a Kadura here, make Hawksmoor take a seat and try to yeah. pass you in the stretch, because that hasn't worked. There's no speed, and we know if Thundering Sky wants to show speed, yeah. she can. Yeah, she can. That, that's very true. I, I would have no problem with that. If they're going to try anything in this race, you might as well try that, because I don't know if she's going to be able to sit behind these other horses and I'll finish them. And the price will be certainly right. Probably the longest shot in this four-horse field. Let's take a look at our top selections for the Grade 3 Noble Damsel. Uni's performance last time. I was just a wow kick from far back. And if she can just stay close and this just turns into a, a quarter mile sprint from home where these horses are just two lengths, uh, yeah. you know, separating each other, turning into the stretch, I think she's the most likely winner. For me, the key is this. Hawksmoor has to go to the lead and I think Manny Franco has to try to open this thing I up agree. with two and a half furlongs to go and say, why or please? Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. I think that's the only way she wins. I Listen, I, I know that she's tough in here. I just don't buy her last couple of races. I want to try and beat that, beat that horse. 2-3-4 for Mike, 4-3-2 for me in the Grade 3 Noble Damsel Stakes Race 4 at Belmont Park. Bet it with a new DRF Bets account. You get a 300% deposit match when you sign up at bets.drf.com. Approximate post time for the 4th at Belmont on Saturday. The Grade 3 Noble Damsel, 3.07 Eastern. Good luck.